Welcome to my PLC tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at Logix Pro. Logix Pro is a PLC or a programmable logic controller simulation package or simulation software. And we're going to look at doing a very highly requested simulation in this software called the Traffic Light. So let's get into it. Uh, once you open up Logix Pro, uh, you'll be able to find the simulations up here in the menu bar. You click on simulations, and then we're going to click on the traffic simulator. Here we are. So it brings up this screen, and you can see all of the elements here that are part of this simulation. Uh, this is a, uh, I would call it a very basic traffic light. It used to be very common in the United States. You'll still find it in many places, not as common as it once was in a uh, like in a single intersection where you have just one light or one fixture. And on that fixture, you have the three lights for each of the four ways. So you have 12 lights in all, uh, three lights on each side. Um, but we're just going to do the basic traffic light exercise here in this video or this tutorial. And uh, we're going to use a very common method for programming the traffic light. We're going to use timers to do that. Um, and we're going to need a little bit of help or a little guidance. So if you'll go up here to the help menu, and if you click on student exercises, that should open up a window in your browser that looks like this. And we want to click on traffic control, applying cascading TON timers. Uh, and then if you click on that, it should take you to this page here. Okay, for this exercise, we're just going to be doing three lights. We're not going to be working uh, with both sides or both uh, directions of traffic. We're just going to look at three lights to start with. We're going to start simple, and then you can take these techniques that we're going to use here, and then you can apply them to doing both directions. Um, uh, don't forget that the three lights on the direct opposite side of the light are identical to the ones on the side that you're looking at because remember um, in the direction that you're headed so you don't have to program 12 individual lights uh, if you're going to do the entire fixture it's just six lights uh, three lights in one direction and three lights in the other and then they're duplicated on the back sides of the fixture okay uh, but we're just going to do three lights um, for this tutorial all right so uh, the three lights that we're going to work with are the ones here on the left side, the red, yellow, and green, or actually red, amber, and green is more correct. But whichever's cool with you, I'm not going to take off points for uh, saying yellow instead of amber. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to use the three lights that are on the left. We're not going to worry with the three lights that are on the right side. Uh, that's in a later episode, maybe but I have pretty good faith that you guys will be able to take these techniques and use them um, to do the other exercises for the traffic light. But we are going to use timers. And this is the secret ingredient down here is this little timing diagram that they give us to show us the order that the lights need to be illuminated. Notice they start with red. Uh, so over on the left would be our beginning of the time, our timeline. So this is where we start, and then we can see that the red light is going to be on for 12 seconds. Then the green light should come on for 8 seconds, and then the amber light should come on for 4 seconds. Okay, so that's the order. We start with red, then we go to green, and then we go to amber. Okay, and then it also tells us, again, the length of time, 12 eight, and four seconds. That's important information, 12, eight, and four seconds. So you can print this out or you can do a screenshot of it so that you can have this handy while you're programming. Because when you get to some more advanced traffic light simulations or programs that you're going to work on, then you're going to work with different timing, timing diagrams. These diagrams will change a little bit, but the method is the same. Don't forget that. The method is the same. You're going to have a starting point, then you're going to go through some different time zones or time segments, and then you'll come to an end, and then it will loop, right? So when you get to the end here, it should just simply repeat back to the beginning. And this process 
is over and over and over, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. All right? So uh, let's begin. I think we've got enough information. Let's go back to Logix Pro. Here we are with our traffic light simulation. It's already pulled up for us. And we're going to start programming. Now, normally, I usually like to start my programs with like a start-stop rung, something where we're going to be starting the process with a start button and a stop button. But this one doesn't have. Uh, this simulation doesn't have a start button or a stop button, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, basically, this is going to be a program that's running all the time once we put the PLC in the run mode. All right, so uh, let's begin. Um, we know that the red light should come on first. And remember, it's supposed to be on for 12 seconds. And then the green light, which will be 8 seconds. And then the yellow, or amber, which will be 4 seconds. Okay? And we can always tweak those times later. Um, all right, so I don't really have to worry about the colors just yet. I'm, I'm more concerned or more interested in the time zones. Remember, we start with 12 seconds, and then we had an 8 second, and then a 4 second. That's the important things. All right, so to do this, to pull this off, we're going to use what's called cascading timers. That just simply means that we're going to use multiple timers. Cascading timers would be two or more timers that work together Want the first timer that comes on in times, when it finishes, it's going to start a second timer. And then the second timer will time. And then when it finishes, it's going to start a third timer. And then when the third timer finishes, it's going to actually reset the first timer so that everything starts back over. And this continuously runs in a loop. So I have timer one, then timer two, and then timer three. All right, so let's pull this off. Let's go to the timer tab, and let's pull down a T-O-N. That is an on-delay timer. Alan Bradley calls it a timer on delay, T-O-N. Now, there are other ways you could pull this off uh, with other timer types. And by the way, there are many other methods for programming a traffic light than using just multiple timers. And we'll again, hopefully may have some videos coming up to demonstrate some of those techniques. All right. But one of the ways that works really well is using cascading timers because most programmable logic controllers, regardless of their brand, they utilize timers. And so you can use this method uh, in Allen Bradley PLCs, in Siemens, uh, in Modicon, um, uh, do more, uh, click, PLCs. So this is a very, very uh, universal type method. All right, so here's our first timer. And let's go ahead and bring down another timer. We're going to have three timers, each of them on their own rung. Okay, here they are. So let's go ahead and give them an address. So the first one, I'm going to double click here and I'm going to type T4 colon one and hit enter. Now that I've given it an address, I can go ahead and put it, put in a preset value. The preset value of a timer is not necessarily the exact time. Uh, like we need 12 seconds. We need this timer to be 12 seconds, but the time base is 0.1. So we've got to put in a preset value that when multiplied times 0.1 gives me the eight seconds. Okay. So we're going to have to put in an 80. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry. It should be 12 seconds. The first time segment is 12 seconds. So 120. So 120 times 0.1 or 120 multiplied times 0.1 gives me 12. So that's 12 seconds. So that's the value. And that's, that's the way timers work with Allen Bradley. Uh, and most any other PLC, if they have a time base value that you can set or change or it's specified for you, you have to be careful with the preset values. Now, the new Allen Bradley PLCs, like the uh, the 5000 series, uh, the Control Logics PLCs, uh, they have a fixed time base of milliseconds. Okay, and so you would have to put in. Uh, if we wanted 12 seconds, we'd have to put in 12,000 because 12,000 
times, that would be 12,000 milliseconds, which would be 12 seconds. Okay. But this is the 500, the old slick 500 series. Um, is what Logix Pro uses. And as far as I know, Logix Pro is not going to be updating to the Control Logix format. So we're stuck with using the old address based um, numerics here, as well as the time bases. Uh, and in Allen Bradley, the time bases are variable. You can set those to two or three different options, three different options, I think. It might be four. Anyway, sorry. Sorry to get off track here. Uh, just trying to give you guys uh, lots of helpful information here that might help you when you get away from Logix Pro and actually into a real PLC. Okay, so the first timer, we've got it set to 120. The second timer, we're going to give it an address of T4 colon 2. The preset's going to be 80. That's 8 seconds. And then the third one is going to be T4 colon 3. And the preset there is going to be 40, which is going to be four seconds, right? So 40 times 0.1 gives me the four seconds that we need. So now we've got three timers, a 12-second, an 8-second, and a 4-second. Now we need to get these guys uh, cascading because right now, if we were just simply to run this program, all three of these timers would time at the same time, right? That's not what we want. We want one timer to time first, and then it will start the next timer, and then the second timer will start the third timer, and then they'll reset. So how do we do that? It's actually fairly easy. So we're going to go back and grab an examine if closed instruction, and we're going to put that on the second rung with the second timer. Why? Because I want the first timer, when it's done, I want it to start the second timer. So we're going to come here and put T4 colon 1 slash DN. T4 colon 1 slash DN. So when the first timer goes done, this instruction will become true and it will energize the second timer. So the second timer can't start until the first timer has finished, until it's done. Now, the third timer, it needs to start when the second timer is done. So let's get another examine if closed. This is going to be T4 colon 2, which is the second timer. When it's done, it's going to start the third timer. Well, when did the first timer start? Well, the first timer should start up instantly when we first you know, run the program. So that's what it's doing. It's going to run. And then it's, when it's done, it's going to start the second timer. And then when it's done, it's going to start the third timer. And then all three timers will be sitting in a done state at that point, right? Now it will just stop. It won't repeat. And that's okay if you just want to run one cycle. And that's what it would do. But we want the timers to repeat. We want this loop to repeat. And once the third timer is done timing, we want it to go back to the first timer and start over. So we're going to have to get the third timer to actually reset the first timer. To do that, we're going to use an examine if open, and it's going to be the third timer, T4 colon 3 slash DN. Okay? This one's a little more confusing, right? This one might be a little harder to understand. But this instruction basically will be true unless the third timer is done. If the third timer is done, this particular instruction will be false. Okay, it'll open. It'll open up, which is what we want. Okay, so how does this work? So in the beginning, none of these timers are done. They haven't even timed. So what happens is this instruction is true. Okay, and then the first timer will start timing, and then when it's done, the second timer will start timing, and then when it's done, the third timer will start timing, and then when the third timer is done, this instruction will go false, and as soon as it goes false, what happens? This first timer will de-energize, and it'll reset. That will cause this instruction to go false, and then the second timer will reset. 
which will cause this instruction to go false, and then the third time will reset. And then when the third timer resets, this instruction goes back true. And then the first timer, now that process I just told you, this resetting that's happening happens just like that. It happens in milliseconds. It's very fast. So you won't really see that. You probably won't even see this first instruction here on the rung even change state because it's going to happen so fast. So what happens is the first timer times for 12 seconds, then the second one for eight, and then the third one for four, and then it quickly, quickly resets, and then the first timer starts timing again. Let's watch this. Let's program it. Let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and do a download. Let's go to the run mode, and look real carefully. Look over here. The first timer is timing. Should get up to 12 seconds. Notice the other two timers aren't. At 12 seconds, it goes done, and then the second timer it's timing for eight seconds. And then the last timer, the third timer. And then when the third timer is done, look what happened. Real quickly, in the blink of an eye, it reset the first timer, and it's back timing again, just that quick. So the loop happens very fast. The reset and the restart of the first timer is very quick. See that? And so this is the proper way to test. Anytime you're working with cascading timers, you need to test the timers before you even try to go in. Notice the lights aren't working. Why are the lights not working? We haven't programmed the lights. We've got no rungs here that are operating the lights. And that's fine. This is normal. We haven't got that far yet. We want to. You've got to get these timers working right before the lights are ever going to work. And I see students doing this all the time. They try to do too much at one time, and then they get the, the program's not working, the light's not working, and then it becomes very hard to troubleshoot. So the first thing we need to make sure is these timers are working in the proper order. They're timing for the proper amount of time. They're resetting. They're in a loop over and over and over. We got, and if that is true, like mine are doing right now, if they are working properly, then we can move to doing the lights. Once you get the timers working, the lights are a piece of cake. No problem on the lights. This is the hard part, making sure those timers are working properly. Most of the time, when a student has a problem with the traffic light, it's in those timers. It's not the actual rungs that are controlling the lights. Okay, so let's go back to program mode. And you can actually click on the uh, park options here to to turn the cars off for right now. Okay, uh, we have the timers working. That looks great. Let's move on. Now let's get the lights working. So the way that I like to do it is just simply we're going to need uh, three rungs, one for each light. So let's go ahead and put that in there. Uh, so the first light that needs to be on is going to be the red light. So I'm going to come over here and grab the address bring it over, then I'm going to right-click, edit symbol, and I'm going to call it red. And actually, it's the red on the left side, because normally I'll put red L, like red on the left. Um, that, that will be helpful if you're doing all six lights, but right now we're only just doing three. But I'm going to change that. Red L, that's red on the left when looking here at the simulation screen. Okay, the second light to come on, remember, for eight seconds is going to be the green. So put that in there. You can type these addresses in if you want, but I like dragging them over. It reduces the chance of uh, typing in an error. Uh, so this is going to be green left. And then finally, the last light is going to be the amber on the left. There we go. So now red, green, and amber. And that's the order that we want them on. That's not the order that they are on the fixture, on the light fixture. So be careful with that too. Sometimes students get these lights operating in the wrong order, and they're very obvious in the wrong order. Okay, so let's start with the red light. The red light is going to be on for 12 seconds, so that's the first timer. 
And let's go ahead and put an instruction in here and examine if closed would be my pick. And we want the red light to be on while the first timer is timing. And Allen Bradley makes this very easy because they have what's called a timer timing bit. So just put in the address of T4 colon 1 slash TT, the timer timing bit. Some PLC manufacturers don't have a timer timing bit, so you have to be a little creative. And there is a workaround. You can use, you can use an enable bit along with a done bit. The combination of those, so you'd have to have two instructions for that. Um, but as far as I know, um, most of the popular PLCs, even the Click um, and the Do More, will use a timing timer timing type feature. I think theirs is actually called an enable bit, but it's really a timer timing bit. So you just have to figure out on whatever PLC you're actually programming. If you're outside of the Logix Pro simulator, that it's the right function. We want something from the timer that tells me or tells us that that timer is currently actually timing. It's in that 12 second window. And then when it's true, right here, when this instruction is true, then that red light will be on. Pretty easy, right? So we're going to do the same thing for the other two lights. What about the green light? The green light should be on for eight seconds. That's the second timer. And so that's going to be T4 colon 2 slash TT. And then finally, the last one is T4 colon 3 slash TT. Okay? So uh, if we've done this correctly, the red light will be on during the first timer. The green light will be on during the second timer, and the amber light will be on during the third timer. Now, we already had the timers working, right? So this, you know, this shouldn't affect anything the timers are doing at all. Uh, we may have the lights in the wrong, connected to the wrong timer. That could happen. But the timers, we've already tested, so we know they're good because we wouldn't have moved on if we had a problem with the timers. All right? So let's download this, hit run. All right, look at there. We got our red light on. It's on. It's the timer. The first timer's timing. The red light's on. Then it should go to green. It does. Green's not going to be on quite as long. It's only eight seconds. And then amber comes on for a very short amount of time, four seconds. And then look at there. We're back to red. And then you got to sit back as a driver, as a licensed driver, and say, all right, is that light working properly? Is that the sequence or the order of the lights? And it is. That's correct. We don't go directly from green to red. We don't, do, we don't go from amber to green. So you know as a driver there's a sequence that the lights have to be in. So don't forget that. Make sure you evaluate and make sure the light is working logically the way that it's supposed to. Hey, it looks great. I don't have a problem with that. So this is the way that you can program the traffic light or just a, just a simple traffic light, right? Just three lights, um, the ones you see. We haven't done the other side, but the other side is not going to be any more difficult, really, than um, this was, uh, as long as you use the same technique, right? Okay. So it would be cascading timers. The cascading timers, don't forget, that can be two timers. It can be 20 timers. Cascading timers, how many time zones do you need? Uh, and we got that information from here. Okay? So just to give you a little peek ahead, if you want to work ahead, exercise two is you're going to be doing all six lights, right? So as a licensed driver, you got to think about the way those lights are supposed to work. So once you get it programmed, you can look at it and tell if it's right or not, okay? But look at the timing. Di they give you a timing diagram, which works exactly like the timing diagram that we just looked at. There's a start, which is over here to the left. And then as you move to the right, you're looking at the different time zones. You would think that there's six lights, so there would be six timers. And while you could do that, 
You could program it using six timers, one for each light. That's really not necessary. They're showing you here there's really only four time zones. So how many timers are you going to need? Only four because you only have four time zones. But since we have two sides now, two sides through the traffic light, there's going to be two lights on during each time zone. Two lights. And they're showing you that here. Like for the first time zone, there's going to be a red and a green. Red on the left and green on the right is going to be on. And then you have the second time zone and then the third time zone and then the fourth time zone. Okay? Because think about it. A traffic light always has one light on on each side. Always. If there's a red on this side, then there's a, probably a green on the other side, or it could be a yellow on the other side. Sometimes there's a red on both sides. There's never a green on both sides, right? That would be dangerous. Then you'd have cars hitting each other. So don't forget about how a traffic light really works. Um, I see that a lot too. Just simply, we forget. We're so, we get so distracted in the programming that we forget how the traffic light works. So my guess is we're going to need four timers, not six, four timers to do exercise two. Okay? And then if you want to go on up to exercise three, exercise three does use six timers for all six lights, but it's not one timer per light. It's a little different. It's to actually get what's called the overlap. Um, so the red light turns on on one side and then the red light's on on the other side. So there's a period of time, a small period of time, small window of time where there's red on on both sides. And that's to provide a little bit of delay so that the drivers don't just, you know, shoot through the intersection as soon as they see the green light when cars are still going through. Okay. So hopefully that helps. Uh, don't know if I'll do a video on exercise two or three. Um, probably won't. I've just given you all the information you really need. It programs the same way that we just did. This one's still running. So hope you enjoyed that. Hope you have gained something from it. Maybe you've learned something from this video. Hopefully you've learned about cascading timers. Uh, cascading timers are very beneficial. They're used way more than just for traffic lights. Um, you'll find opportunities in lots of different processes. Um, to utilize cascading timers. But this is a really good example of where they come in. I probably will do future videos on doing the traffic light using other methods other than cascading timers because there are other ways to do it, using math instruction, using sequencers, um, uh, using shift registers. There are several different more advanced ways, not necessarily better, but there are other ways and for different purposes the reason you might choose to do another method other than using these timers okay so there you have it exercise one of the student exercises for the traffic light in logics pro thank you guys <laughs>